I went on a, sp a makeup splurge because I'm in my makeup era. I need a practical solution to me feeling insecure all the time and I'm not gonna be, you know, wallowing in my own filth being like, I'm so ugly, I'm so ugly and then not actually put it. Like the, the solution is simple. All I need to do is smother myself in makeup and then I will feel much better. I've been going through, no, I haven't even been going through a hard time. My mind is just, torturing me constantly all the time. I have a suspicion that a lot of people are going through the same thing, where it's like the narrative in your head and your internal thoughts and your self-talk is just negative, pessimistic. As humans, we just have a natural, I think it's just easier to focus on the negative than it is with the positive. What I did was, I actually did some research because I didn't want to, I, wa I didn't, wanted to come onto the video and actually give some practical solutions because that's what helps me when I'm going through a insecure phase. I need advice, I need someone to tell me what to do because I'm not gonna come up with the solution on my own and it's just gonna be a vicious, vicious cycle that I'm gonna go through over and over and over again. And I'm gonna allow myself to feel this way because when you're keeping things bottled up and you're listening to those thoughts in your head, it's so easy to justify them to yourself. Say you're looking for a job, you go over to your parents and you're struggling to pay your rent and you're still looking for a job and you're like, no one, I haven't heard back from anywhere. I'm a fucking piece of shit. I'm never gonna get a job. And then you go over and visit your parents for dinner and they're like, did you find a job yet? And you're like, no. And then they go, oh. Jesus, you'd want to get on that. And then it reaffirms that negative self-talk talk that's going in your head. If you went to that meeting with your parents, you'd be able to be like, react to it in a way that gives positive reinforcements where you're like, no, I will find a job eventually. And you don't need to have that. Reaction isn't going to affect you as much if you had like a strong mindset at the, at the time of going into it. So anyway, the three books, if you're not arse reading and if you're not into reading, totally fair enough. The three books that I, and if you, but if you are interested, the three books that I'm going to be referencing in this video are The Courage to be Disliked, Future Tense, and Biohack Your Brain. Biohack Your Brain is definitely 100% my favourite one. The Courage to be Disliked, it does kind of like bully you at the same time, which sometimes I need because I kind of like tough love. You're depressed? No, you're not depressed. You're actually just self-obsessed. And I'm like, maybe I am self-obsessed for fuck's sake. And you feel really shit about yourself, but then after you get over that, go fuck yourself, stop thinking about yourself. There's better things to be thinking about in the world. That sort of does help me sometimes to a certain extent. But if you are feeling really, really shit about yourself and you're you're not interested in tough love, I wouldn't read The Courage To Be Disliked. But The Courage to be, to be Disliked, if you want to make the decisions that are best for you, you are gonna disappoint people in your life, i.e. your partners, your family. I have such an issue where I make a lot of decisions in my life based off what other people are gonna think. And that's not even like my parents or my family. It's more like the general public. It's like, what will make me look like I have my shit together? What will make me look like I know what I'm doing? Whereas I know that I might be happier or more secure or stable in another situation or if I've made a different decision. But also another thing that affects my future decision making, what hinders my decision making is because I don't trust myself. I've made a lot of mistakes in my past. You'll all know because I document it all on the fucking internet. And I think that's what a huge issue for me is. The internet is unforgiving and it's so easy for me to ruminate on it because it's public. Other people sort of can hold me accountable because I put it on the internet. But I want people to be able to learn from my mistakes. It's okay to make mistakes, it's okay to fuck up. If anything, it's healthy and good for you to make mistakes because I wouldn't have learned from it if I didn't make those mistakes. I'm an impulsive, rash person. So I probably was going to make those mistakes anyway. It's brought me to a really good place that I am now and I've learned so fucking much from it. I am still making mistakes. I'm going to make mistakes in the future. I know that for a fact, but I know that I'm gonna sort of welcome it with open arms because I know that I have made those mistakes and kind of gotten myself to a good place. A lot of times though, I do focus on it too much and I'm like, I'm a fucking failure. I, w I regret all of these things I did in the past. No matter how much you regret or focus on the past, it's not gonna fucking change it. So you need to start thinking of something else and how can you use that to your advantage? I have a fucking nudity scandal and a baby. I'm sure there's worse things that I could have done. That to me is just, it's so hard not to focus on, especially because the internet can be so unforgiving and other people are like, uh, what? You have to compartmentalize what other people think and what the people in your life that you care about think about you. All I need to focus on is that what the people that care about me think about me. I'm going in with the e.l.f. Hydro Glow Liquid Filter. This is like the Charlotte Tilbury dupe. I do recommend this. I've only used it now. Actually, no, don't listen to me. I don't even have the Charlotte Tilbury one, so I can't actually 
actually compare, but I do like it anyway, so if you want to buy it, I mean, do what you want. But anyway, I wrote little notes. We don't have to be defined by trauma. It was something that I really needed to hear. We make excuses for ourselves. I'm like, I'm angry because of this, this, X, Y, and Z. I act like this because of this, this, and this. Especially when you have a child, it's like, it really, really forces you to grow up and stop making excuses for yourself because yes, all those bad things happened, but not loads and loads of bad things happened. Good things happened as well. Again, you can use that to your advantage and be like, I'm not going to behave in this way because I want to make the best life possible for my child, which also can make you more angry and more resentful to people because you think, why couldn't have those people in my past seen that for themselves when they had children, etc, etc. Reasons for action can be changed and the freedom to transform is always available. We actively choose our lifestyles and worldviews around the age of 10, which I thought was really interesting. This decision is based on previous life, life experiences, both positive and negative. Now, if I think of myself as a 10 year old, like melt. I'm using, I love this foundation. It's Milani Conceal and Perfect. I actually saw this on a Tati video when I was probably 14 or 15. And I always go back to it, like go back to it when I want full coverage makeup. But I have been just wearing CC cream since I gave birth. And I only bought those recently. I bought two shades, 2A and zero. I'm using creamy nude at the moment because I don't have tan on. And then if I do, I'll use 2A and then I just add more bronzer, if that makes sense. I don't like being too orange uh, or try not to be too orange anyway. Change requires courage. Be ready for the unknown and potential failure. One good thing that came from the courage to be disliked, it talks about like the benefits of experiencing failure. I know for myself, again, everything I've done is like documented on the internet. So I think that's what I'm more shameful of because I do, well, everyone does. I do to some degree care what other people think. And that's why it's harder for me to get over things but like everyone does I just have to actively tell myself that it doesn't matter and I have notes now on my notice board like affirmations because your brain doesn't know the difference between what's true or false so if you just keep telling yourself something your brain will eventually start to believe it Like for example, if it makes you feel any better, if anyone's like failing their exams or maybe they dropped out of college. I dropped out of college three times. One of my big issues was I love learning. I think it's a really good positive attrib attribute to have and I shouldn't be shaming myself for that. But as well as that, I, I'm interested in too many things. And that's the issue with like getting a degree. Four years of learning the same thing, even though you can do a broad degree and I know all that. It's just too daunting. And I don't think the education system just suits me personally. And that's okay, it does suit other people. But at the same time, I have this thing about needing a degree or something or needing a degree is the only signifier of intelligence. And that's what makes me so insecure about learning is because I feel, it makes me feel stupid. And it's like reaffirming this idea that I'm an idiot and going nowhere, even though that's, I know that's not true. I'm a smart girl, smart enough. Like I could always be smarter. I'm always willing to be smarter. I have an open mind. I'm willing to learn. I'm willing to put myself out there. So instead, that and to make myself feel better and focusing on that thought of I'm stupid and I'm going nowhere it discourages you from actually learning anything else so so it's a vicious cycle where I'm not going to do anything if I have those thoughts going around in my head And I saw a TikTok, some woman, I think she was in her 50s or whatever, she was like, use your 20s to figure out what you like. And that just made me feel so much better because I, I think we're all so scared of being like, you needing to be on the right track or some sort of predetermined stage of life, be marking off all these very specific milestones that just don't suit everyone. Sorry, yeah, this concealer is Hydrating Camo Concealer Satin Finish by e.l.f in the shade light ivory. People who retreat into themselves often do so because they don't want to be hurt by others. They gave an example of someone who is socially anxious and because they're socially anxious, they're shutting themselves off from social interactions, perpetuates the anxiety. They're not exposing themselves enough to the point where you're working it up eventually when you have to leave your home or put yourself into social situation, you'll start getting panic attacks and it just gets worse and worse. In all of these books, they had a sort of a chapter on raising children, like uh, like tips on raising children as well, which I really appreciated and I didn't realize when I was reading the books or that I, when I started the books, obviously when you're a parent, you wanna take away your child's pain. If your child's feeling anxious, you're like, okay, that's no problem. Don't go to school today. Absolutely not. Be supportive and you you need to treat uh, teach a child how to manage their anxiety and manage their emotions rather than trying to take it away. And we probably all know someone like like this because th that really rings true to me. I'd say people who are like generally unreliable or always cancel at the last minute. I'd say a huge number of those sorts of people when they were living with their family and they were children and if they felt upset or anxious at any point and their child, their 
parents were like, okay, well, you don't have to do that then. Then you don't need to do anything you don't want to do. Whereas that's not a realistic representation of life. You, everyone is always gonna have to do things that they don't want to do. To a certain extent, I'm using the LA Girl Pro Conceal, pain and exclusion are as much a part of life as joy and inclusion. So avoiding bad situations isn't gonna necessarily protect you from them. It's just a part of life that we have to experience. And this one really, I really resonated with this part. Competitive mindsets are exceptionally harmful for mental well-being. It encourages to think, pe think of people as either winners or losers. And we start seeing each other as rivals, threats and impediments to success, which is very stressful. Losing then reinforces a low self-esteem and winning then causes immense insurmountable amount of pressure for people to keep up with that standard. And it talks about the, the importance of community and how we're all part of like a broader community. I feel like I didn't because I never like completed college. And I think maybe with lockdown as well, it really made me feel like I wasn't a part of any community community until I became a mother and that's sort of like shit that that huge change had to happen to me before I sort of like felt a part of something and I'm not saying that if anyone is feeling not a part of something that you have to become a parent to <laughs> to fucking be a part of a community I think that's why people are so longing and desperate to be a part of something and maybe that's why people jump on hateful bandwagons that's the only reasoning I can feel I feel like why people all join in with the dog piling on top of someone is because they desperately want to be feel a part of something like I've done it myself you have to try approach situations with love and compassion which I've been really trying to do because it's so much easier to react to things with hate and negativity the winners and losers and the competitiveness I think there's a huge there's been a huge paradigm shift with our generation because we're exposed to a lot more people like that's to an unnatural extent for example the way on if we go on tiktok and we're scrolling for like an hour think of how many fucking tiktoks that we scroll in an hour let's say you what there's you scroll through even if it's you don't watch the full thing you scroll through 50 tiktoks in an hour that's 50 different type of people that you've seen in one hour but if you think about it say you see 15 beautiful people that you would have never seen if you were off your phone so so you're then compa comparing yourself and you're, you have this sensationalist idea of Jesus Christ I'm so ugly compared to all these beautiful people whereas like in the real world you would have never seen these people on your in your day daily life it's making you think that everyone must like th look like this and I'm I'm the problem there's something wrong with me because everybody looks like this also you're exposed to and what affects me most when I'm on my phone is that you're exposed to other people's traumatic stories. I think that's fair enough. People should have a place to speak about these things. And I'm not trying to shame anyone who does talk about things on the internet because that also creates community for people who have like gone through the same thing. But when you're in a shit place and one of the negative um, postpartum anxiety thoughts that I have, a, like a reoccurring thought, is that the world is a dangerous, horrible place for my daughter to live in. And I feel totally, I feel completely shameful and guilty that I, it's something that I cannot control. Like you cannot control the state of the world when you've brought a child into it. And that's one of my postpartum anxiety recurring thoughts. So when I see these TikToks about like horrible, horrible, I don't want to say them now because I don't want to trigger people now either, but like horrible, horrible things that have happened to people, it reinforces that idea again and it's reaffirming them. This is the Revlon eyebrow pencil. Stop making choices based on what other people might think. You will disappoint people when you make decisions that are best for you. Take responsibilities for your own actions. Allow children their freedom. We're all part of a broader community, which is important to humans to survive. Think about what you can give to the world. Self-obsession leads to loss of perspective. So this is what made me think of that when I was reading the book. You know, when people are like, I protected my energy too much to the point where I have no friends. This is, uh, I think, what is detrimental um, sometimes to the whole like protect your energy cutting out friends and shit because they have toxic traits well like obviously to uh, you know cut out toxic friends yeah totally fair enough but when we take it a step too far and start like cutting people out because they are not serving us like people aren't there to serve you relationships are hard people have flaws and you need to sort of accept accept people from them I now I'm not Again, I'm not judging because I only made a best friend when I turned 21. You know, I was immature as a teenager. I was just like, these people are all fucked up. And like, you know, I just, I found it really, really hard to maintain friendships because I couldn't accept people for who they are. But that was obviously because I was insecure and I d wasn't accepting myself for who I was. And then when I turned 21, I was mature and I was more open. You have to work at relationships, especially friendships. Friendships are hard. People are flawed. They're going to be flaws. All my friends have flaws. 
I'm a deeply flawed person as well, but we all love each other for who we are. And that is a huge testament to my maturity, I think, is that I was able to, I'm sorry, stop recording there. I've been able to maintain friendships and I'm still friends with people now, even though they've emigrated, which is like, I think a huge achievement to have friends, even when they live in different continents. Although it's, it's very, very lonely now because I only made all these best friends. Well, Ashling and Josh, I've been friends with them since I was 18. So I've basically had them, but they were only really like best, best friends until, you know, at 21. I probably have like six best, I'd say six best friends. Half of them have emigrated. I'm feeling very lonely now. And now I have to like kind of open myself up more to make friends again, which is very daunting and scary for me because I had to, I have to repractice that muscle of like reaching out to people, knowing that you're not going to be best friends and be on that level absolutely immediately when you meet someone. It's like something that you have to build up. If anyone has any tips on making friends in your adulthood when you have a baby, now remember the baby part is really important. I can't just like pick up a new hobby and start going out to things because I have her as well. I'm sure that I can make mom friends in my area whereas where I'm living now is very like big little lies, suburbia. I'm just scared to be honest. Okay so the five main points I took from that book are be more independent, reduce your competition. No one's competition. Now when I'm feeling shit about myself it's very easy for me to be like if I see someone achieving something I'm like <sighs> You know, feeling shit about myself, but you can't just reduce your competition. Be happy for people. Be happy for your own achievements as well. It's really hard to do, but anyway, worry less about what others' approval. Still working on that one. Contribute to the community at large. This one, I think, I'm I am getting really good at, and I'm getting my you know getting my friends involved. I could probably always do a bit better to help the world. If anyone has any other tips, how do you contribute to the community at large? Next was Future Tense. This is a book all about anxiety. I've never really suffered with anxiety before until I had my baby, so it's like a whole new world for me. Basically, the takeaway from the book was do deep breathing, which is really annoying, but at the same time, it's hard to fucking remind yourself of that shit when you're like having a panic attack. All you can think of is, oh my God, I'm dying, I'm dying. Oh, there is a good like e exercise that you can do in it though. Anxiety is a sign of being energized and prepared for an upcoming challenge. Change what we believe about anxiety so our body does too. Again, that's the same thing as your brain doesn't know the difference between what's true or false. So if you keep selling, telling yourself something, your brain will start to believe it. And then subsequently your body will start to as well. So it will lower your heart rate. If you're educated on anxiety and why it's necessary for our bodies, it gives you, like knowledge is power. It gives you the power to acknowledge that it's necessary. And it's like, I'm not the only person going through this. My body isn't trying to torture me. This is necessary for my survival. Telling yourself that th those things will help your body react in a way that's more calm. Anxiety helps you perform at your best and respond. Like for example, a lot of my things are, like I get intrusive thoughts, like, I'm gonna fall down the stairs holding my baby. I'm going to sp spill a, a fucking full kettle of uh, boiling water over my baby. I'm gonna, she's gonna fall off the table. You know, those sort of things. Whereas I understand that that's like my maternal instinct to protect her from, from shit. And when I have an intrusive thought like that and I don't tell myself that it's necessary, the, that these thoughts are necessary to protect her, then that's when I'll spiral and get a panic attack because I genuinely, genuinely believe that the, it's going to happen rather than acknowledging that it's just a thought, a, it's a past thought it's only just to protect her it's not to torture me that's not going to happen because I just had the thought to not do it anyway this one I found really interesting and don't 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 take this out of context I got this from a book so I can't be held accountable for misinformation but anyway apparently there was a study that trigger warnings cr increase anxiety and they cause unneeded distress they harm people's ability to be emotionally resilient so they did this study where two groups of students basically were uh, given the same material to read one had a trigger warning and one didn't and what they found is the, the the half of the students that got the trigger warning and continued reading the material actually had a higher heart rate. It created more stress for them while reading it because they were like anticipating something bad happening. And the people who didn't get the trigger warning were more calm and had a lower heart rate when they were reading. So I thought that was a bit interesting. Some things I do wish they had a trigger warning and I understand why they're there. So another way to help anxiety is immerse yourself in the present moment. So sight, smell, touch, breath. And I remember being told that as a child, I always get panic attacks if I'm in the car or on public transport for some reason. I don't know why. But that's actually a good place to have a panic attack I suppose because you can distract yourself with so many things so what what do you smell public transport can be a bit hard because sometimes you know the bus smells like piss so it could be like I can smell the sweet smell of piss and I can see the passing trees in the windows and then what you find you'll distract yourself enough where you're in the present moment and you're not thinking about the future which is where the anxiety stems from the immune system learns how to respond to germs and pathogens by being exposed to them so this is another thing that's uh, talking about how parents shouldn't be taking their children out of potentially dangerous situations well not dangerous like potentially harm 
potentially harmful situations like the body needs to be exposed to these sort of difficult moments in life to be able to to learn how to deal with them it's such an invaluable skill to have as a child as well to learn resilience obviously don't expose children on purpose but it can point us toward our purpose this is the exercise part and i think everyone should take part in this but first i'm just gonna put my blush on sorry there's fucking hair in my eye this is the milani baked powder blush in luminoso this is like literally fucking stunning I also have the Charlotte Tilbury liquid blush in Peachgasm, which I sometimes layer on top because it has a bit of glitter in it as well, so it's nice. Thickest, stickest eyebrow gel. Oh yeah, so this is a really good exercise. Choose three of the following that make you who you are and write about them. Artistic skills and aesthetic appreciation, sense of humor, relationships, spontaneity, social skills, athletics, music ability and appreciation, physical attractiveness, creativity, business and managerial skills, and romantic values. These exercises lifts people's moods, improve concentration and learning, and make relationships more fulfilling. It helps you take purposeful, meaningful action in your life. I'm gonna do this tonight, I haven't done it myself, but when I saw this, I was like, thank you, an actual practical solution for my anxiety. And because I don't trust my decision-making skills, I think that can really help if anyone else out there doesn't just uh, trust their own decisions. I'm excited to do that tonight. I don't know what, I, I, like, I don't necessarily know what my three are. I think it might be artistic skills and aesthetic appreciation create no actually i'd say it's relationships the three relationships that's with friends and family so i'd say relationships with friends and family business and managerial skills i do have a good business head on me creativity i suppose because i'm not really that aesthetic i'm not really artistic either i'm a bit messy so i wouldn't say that's me and the, another thing it said strive for excellence not perfection be open to trying new experiences and approaches to problem solving that treat your mistakes as learning experiences rather than reasons to criticize yourself so this book future tense kind of reaffirmed the Courage to be Disliked for me as well. So the two were really good to read together. The last book I read then is Biohack Your Brain. If you are interested in psychology and wanting to learn more all about nutrition and your body as well, I would really recommend the Biohack Your Brain. So I have a real fear of getting Alzheimer's or dementia. I think it's because the de like I've witnessed the demise of my of my granny it just fucking terrors my terrifies me like you you basically wither away it's re it's a really sad uh, they're really sad diseases no sorry this is a new highlighter i'm using it's the revolution highlighter reloaded in set the tone okay i'll just put a little bit of mascara on i'm using the maybelline since a uh, sensational mascara so biohack your brain this is everything that i learned from it scientists used to think that lost cells couldn't be replaced but the latest neuroscientific research shows that they were wrong. Really made me feel better about myself because I feel like I have fucked my brain up. Like one night of binge drinking can kill your brain cells. Think of all the drinking that I did in my early 20s. This is why I'm mostly scared to get drunk because the lack of sleep with having a baby created a lot of brain fog for me and I was dehydrated. I wasn't drinking enough water loads of days where I was breastfeeding and I know that that's bad for your health. It's really scary when I have short-term memory loss or like I can't remember a memory that Jason can. It's terrifying. So I'm glad that this, that they talked about this in the book because I was shitting myself that I wouldn't be able to get those cells back, but you can. Adults generate new cells into their 60s, 70s, and even 80s. So you can teach an old dog new tricks. Good blood circulation supports brain growth throughout life. Now I know doing this every night can really help with your blood cir circulation. Well, doing a headstand can, but I can't do that right now because I have the rollers in. If you palm your legs up like this every night before you go, be go to bed, it can help you have a better night's sleep and it like puts the blood up to your brain and that's probably why like yoga is so good for you as well because it really helps with blood circulation so neurogenesis is the creation of new brain cells which occurs in the hippocampus that regulates memory and learning number one thing to do for blood circulation is take a brisk walk girls get your steps in absolutely feeling depressed take a quick walk annoyed at someone take a fucking quick walk and it's so simple as well i love a simple solution to something that's like detrimental to your health berries and seafood protect your brain against cognitive decline now i'm glad i'm not vegan anymore because i can recommend this and i'm fucking loving the salmon girls salmon tuna you know yourself oily fish all the way I remember listening to the joe rogan podcast with miley cyrus and she said that she had to stop being vegan because her doctor doctor recommended eating oily fish because of her brain fog so i'm sorry if any vegans are watching this but obviously talk to your doctor and stuff i'm not a fucking professional veggies and legumes eat more whole grains limit consumption of dairy meat and sugar now i have a real processed sugar problem i probably have a chocolate bar every single day like a shared chocolate bar every single day because when i'm 
on my laptop or editing, I, I like to give myself little rewards because the education system is based off of rewards and punishment. So how I encourage myself to do things is still based off of that conditioning. And I say we're all sort of conditioned in that way as well. So if I do something, I feel like I have to reward myself, otherwise I won't do it again. And it encourages me to keep going. And then if I don't complete something, I have to punish myself, which is obviously a really bad habit to get into because you should be doing things just for the intrinsic value of them rather than for the reward or the punishment. So when I'm editing, I'll have a cup of coffee and a chocolate because I'm rewarding myself for doing something good. And then if I don't do something, I'm like feeling shit about myself and then I doom scroll in bed, which I know is gonna make me feel bad about myself. Drink more water, there was a whole thing about like hydration, but we all know that. We should all be drinking more water. Uh, women should aim for five to six pints, which is 2.7 liters. I feel like if you're breastfeeding, you should be drinking more water than that. To keep an eye on your pee, if it's a light, hon if it's darker than a light honey color, you're definitely dehydrated and you need to drink more. But there's a whole thing on how like your brain literally can't work properly if you're dehydrated and I remember someone told me this before I can't remember who it was if you wake up in the morning you're dehydrated you have coffee and you haven't had your water your organs literally start to break down not drinking enough water can literally kill you having mental workouts can make you healthier and make your mind healthier and stronger and these are the three different types of intelligence crystallized intelligence are facts not and knowledge and stuff that you can withhold like know-how and stuff fluid intelligence which is solving problems with reason and then emotional intelligence which is social life and interpersonal relationships and I think the only thing that's accredited in mainstream education is crystallized intelligence, whereas a lot of people don't have that type of intelligence. But this is the best thing that I read in the whole book and made me feel really good about myself. Reading long form narrative fiction boosts all three forms of intelligence. So just reading a book. So reading books are fun and cognitively improving your life. And another thing to help with your boost your intelligence is Picking up a new word every day. Having a large vocabulary can create a greater cognitive efficiency and learning words gives parts of your brain a processing workout. Being creative, so writing stories, poems, letters, all grows new brain cells, which also made me feel good about myself because I'm writing every day. So that can include journaling, writing a letter to your friends. I remember in lockdown, me and my friends were writing letters to each other and it just made me feel, it makes you feel so good about yourself. It's so fun and uses your creativity and you're doing something nice as well and communicating with your friends. To boost your attention span, you can do jigsaw puzzles and sudoku and then there's an, uh, another thing about beating uh, stress is the breathing so breathe in for six hold for three and breathe out for six Stress also halts the growth of new cells and shrinks grey matter. This is one thing that really stressed me out because it's so hard to manage stress anyway because there's some things that you literally just cannot control. I remember when I was living in that apartment, I was so stressed out of my head every single day and there was literally nothing I could do about it because I was still living in the apartment and like, and it was affecting my body so much. I wasn't getting my period. My milk, milk supply was reduced. My hair was falling out, like so much shit. So if you can take yourself out of that negative, negative stressful situation, definitely do but I know it's not it's not helpful advice because a lot of times we're stuck in these negative and stressful situations but I know that from when I moved my milk supply came back and I got like the biggest period of my life and now oh I'm just, I just feel so much better my hair is even growing back and I feel much lighter I'm getting better sleep oh it's just amazing the best part negative thoughts can rewire your brain again with your brain doesn't know the difference between a truth or a false so if you keep telling yourself I'm never gonna find someone I love. And this, the things that are, if you're not talking about these things out loud or to people that can give you positive advice, like maybe don't tell, talk to people that are always going to reaffirm those negative thoughts. If you have like a toxic parent or a toxic friend, maybe don't talk to them about it because they will just reaffirm those beliefs to you. But if you have someone that you can trust and you know they're gonna give you good advice, it's really good to talk about things. If you don't have anyone to talk to, make sure that you're writing down your negative thoughts so you can look at it from a different perspective and you can kind of, you can establish what's true, what's truth and what what is just your mind fucking taking a toll on you. Obviously, if you talk to someone that you love, you know what the, you already know what the advice is gonna be. You'll find someone eventually, there is someone out there for you, just one bad experience shouldn't rewrite your future or like re rewrite your destiny. You need to keep putting yourself out there and there's so many people out there that do love you, your friends and family, et cetera, et cetera. Your ex is probably still obsessed with you, so stop telling yourself that you're unlovable. You just haven't found the right person for you yet. It's so easy to get into that negative headspace and continuing that cycle of being like, I deserve this, but negativity begets more negativity. 